Welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine with Pick and Pay and an episode in what as you can see is not the Dan Really Likes Wine cellar. Instead, sitting in the Heat Grill Room in Pretoria, it's a restaurant in a shopping centre. Now normally restaurants and shopping centres are not my favourite, but we're a couple of courses into our meal so far and the food has been particularly good. A really nice baked camembert, very indulgent, very rich. Please don't tell my nutritionist that I had it. If she asked, I had a salad with no dressing. Uh, and then I took a really, really good ribeye, a South African steak, and uh, a perfect one at that. What's really caught my eye here has been the wine, and in particular, the wine that I've been enjoying. Well, they're a small but pretty cool collection of wine drinkers from Greater South Africa, and in particular, by marriage, like myself, a fellow Greek. Uh, Heather Poulos is the managing director, the marketing director at, uh, at Stenberg, and uh, a very dedicated one. She tastes every single Stenberg wine, at least once a day, which is, is very committed. <laughs> and, uh, and you've got a really cool job, just from a, a very basic perspective, in that you get to spend your time when you're not traveling as is today, uh, what I think is uh, not just one of the oldest, but one of the most beautiful and, uh, and charming wine estates in the Cape. No, most definitely. Thanks for having me today. And we, we are very fortunate. I mean, I just, I drive into work every day and I kind of look at my surroundings and I'm so um, fortunate to be working in such a beautiful place. We're very fortunate at Seaburg to be in the oldest uh, wine region in, in South Africa, in the Constantia Valley. And it's just, it's, got, it's so rich in history and so rich in, um, you know, the, the background and the stories behind the valley. But at the same time, we, we try to make sure that we're modern and relevant to the consumers today. And we try to make really delicious wines that people love and enjoy. Well, that wine's been made in the last little while by a really cool guy like JD. But now you've got a new winemaker, a lady's come over from Distel. Before we talk about her and then jump into some wine, what I love about the Stenberg story is that the history is so rich and so good. In fact, I had to Google it because I thought we made this up when you told me over lunch. But your initial winemaker, uh, uh, initial winemaker, your initial owner of Stilberg, back many, many, many years ago, in the uh, 1600s, was a woman who had disguised herself as a man to get to South Africa and then had this multiple list of husbands. No, it, it's quite an interesting and, and rich history that we have. And I suppose it is quite unbelievable at times. But history shows and, and proves that um, Katarina Russ was the first owner of the farm. She came from Germany, as you mentioned, she had to dress as a man because in those days, in 16... 1682, when she first came to the Cape, she, um, you know, women weren't allowed to travel by themselves, so she had to dress as a man to come to South Africa. And uh, in six, uh, 1682, she was um, granted a first piece of land in, in, in Cape Town, which was Steerberg. It was much bigger at the time, it went all the way to Musenberg. Um, and it was the first piece of land that was given a title deed at that stage. Um, and she ran it as kind of a halfway house between False Bay and, and Table Bay. Um, replenishing the soldiers at that time with food and uh, in the early 1700s it then became a, a wine farm. So yeah, she had five wives, can you believe, uh, five husbands should I say, can you believe it? Um, and yeah, they, they all seem to have ended slightly mysteriously. Very mysteriously, yes. So the first, well the first husband um, unfortunately passed away before she came to South Africa but then in no particular order one died from um, an attack from a hippopotamus. As one does. Of course. Um, a second one died from an attack from a lion. And another one um, went hunting and never came back. So uh, that's that's what history says and, and we'll never know the full story. I don't think she even knew the full story. Um, and the last one outlived her. So it's lovely that your first owner was a woman. You've now got a new one. It comes from the Distel stable. A lot of experience, particularly with the Congrats and JC Leroux spaces. Uh, your Bubbles is uh, one of the many wines that you're particularly celebrated for. So not just a really nice and progressive addition to the Steenberg family, but a very accomplished one as well. No, most definitely. We're very excited for Linda to join the team. Uh, she'll be joining early June, and no, I think it, it, it carries the story quite nicely. You know, the history and, and tying in with and having a female cellar master joining us. And she's a very accomplished um, winemaker. Um, she's as you mentioned, come from the soul, where she spent ten plus years, I believe, um, doing um, JC Leroux and Congress. But prior to that, she was with Niederberg doing soul wines as well. So yeah, I think that you know our Steenberg um, bubblies, the in our instances that we do, are really well loved and very popular. And I think that she'll really add um, depth to that and, and really help us grow that category for us. Um, but then also coming from the history of soul wines as well, um, and that ties in quite nicely with our um, 
the kind of uh, knowledge and expertise in Sauvignon Blanc. Um, you know, being the terroir that we have and the cool climates and the deep post granite soils um, really lends itself well to Sauvignon Blanc. So we have a range of Sauvignon Blancs in our collection and um, we're quite excited to see what she, what spin she puts on that and how she makes that her own and makes all the gifts. Alright, well the, uh, the bubbles are something you are celebrating for and I think very good reason. So we've got some here, if we can have a little taste and, uh, and let's see what these look like. Great. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can we ask, so this, uh, this is the Chardonnay Brut? Yes, yeah. So this is 100% Chardonnay, non-vintage. Um, and um, these grapes are bought in um, from the regions where Chardonnay is grown best. Um, you know, it's a very, it's a, it's a traditional Mecca Cup Classique style. So in order to be called Mecca Cup Classique, it has to be um, kept on the lease for 12 more months. Um, this is typically kept on the lease for about uh, 13 to 15 months. <laughs> Oh, such an inviting nose. Mm. It says you can drink lots of them. Yeah, exactly. Mm. There is a crispness, but without the tartness. It's, um, you can feel it's beautifully alive. Yeah, yeah. But it's not sharp. It doesn't, uh, uh, it's not overly acidic. Yeah, really we, nice we like to keep it kind of fresh and um, you know, not too serious, but at the same time not being silly and, and, and too kind of jovial, uh, but you know, a, a good quality drink. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. That is most pleasant. Good. And in fact, the place I've probably had this most on of my cellar is at your bistro, which is it's become in a relatively short space of time and must go to destination if you're heading to Cape Town and you've got an interest in food and wine. Most definitely. I mean, the amount of times that I hear my colleague who takes the booking say, oh, sorry, we, you know, we fully booked tomorrow for lunch and supper. What happened to me when I'm on the other yeah, side? Sure, sure. <laughs> no, you have to um, book fine at all, well, not too fine in but um, it's a very popular restaurant and it's very well known for the tapas in the so it's, it's supposed to be a very informal, relaxed place where you can share tapas with your friends and kind of taste whatever you like best. Yeah, and um, Sherry, um, Chef Kerry Kilpin, who runs the place there, is an absolute star. She's really progressive and creates some really fresh, delicious um, meals, which are just out of this world. So we're very fortunate to have um, East Rose 1682. And the bistro is very fortunate to have some great wine, the mm -hmm. bubbles being part of them. Your Sauvignon Blanc is another, which I think is next on our hit list. Uh, the Black Swan, I think I know why, but for those who can't guess the reason for the name? So the Black Swan is based, um, is, is named after our founding member, Katarina Rass. So she um, originally named the farm Swanaveda. Uh, she was from Germany, so in German, um, Swanaveda means the resting place of the swans. And the reason she called it resting place of the swans is because when she arrived, she saw these large animals that were uh, birds and they were black. She thought that they were black swans, um, and because black swans were very common to her part of Germany. And uh, so she called it resting place of the swans, Swanaveda, um, but they weren't swans, they were in fact uh, spurring geese. And uh, so, uh, kind of named after her and the, the history and, and where, we, where we come from, Swanaveda, this is the Black Swan, this is our flagship um, white wine, flagship Sauvignon Blanc. And I suppose a little side note of the reason why we call it the Black Swan is she was naturally, you know, she dressed as a man to come to South Africa, she was the first woman to own land. She was kind of a, a very pioneering woman, uh, first of her time to do anything that she did really. And uh, in, in the economics terms, you get a, a phrase called the uh, Black Swan event, and it's something that's a completely unique event that's unexpected. And I suppose she was that for us. You know, she was something completely different and completely different for her time. And so she's our black swan. So all down to that and not an obsession with Natalie Portman in ballet. <laughs> no, <years>. no. <laughs> all right, well, let's try some if we can. Yes, yeah. So this is the 20, 2017 black swan, which we were very fortunate to be awarded the Plasser's Sauvignon Blanc of the Unwooded Sauvignon Blanc of the Year um, earlier this year. So we were very, very proud of that. Um, yeah, and it's, it's been very well received, it's a really good, well-rounded Sauvignon Blanc. Um, but fair to say that Sauvignon Blanc is in a slightly challenging space where people are asking a little bit more of it and not being content with the 
really young, really green Sauvignon Blanc that often passed for standard fare over the last few years? No, most definitely. I think that um, you know Sauvignon Blanc is still the number one category um, in the wine industry, but I think that um, you're right. People are saying, is this enough? Is this what we want? Are we wanting something um, with slightly different notes to it? And I think that we're having to make sure that what we offer is what the consumer wants, but at the same time staying true to who we are. Um, and with our black swan, this comes from the two best blocks on the farm. So we, we select the best uh, grapes from the vineyard for this, and then they go exclusively into the black swan uh, flagship wine for us. And what we try to do with the black swan is we try to remain true to who we are. We try to do as little winemaking as possible, and really try to let the the terroir and the grapes talk for themselves. And I think that has resulted in a really delicious wine where it has the notes of you know the green, the grassiness, the the flint, the you know all those kind of the, the true minerality, um, which makes which makes Steinberg so famous. But at the same time, it's not too down the line. It has a lot more complexity to it, which I think the the you right the, the local you know the consumer is looking for. It's the basic thing is little wine making is possible. They just play golf all day, <laughs> yeah. every day. That's what they that's that would be like, good. <laughs> it, it is lovely, and it's. Uh, I think one of the key things with getting a, a Sauvignon Blanc into a, a, a broader market is not having it as, as sharp and as raw and as acidic. I mean, there are times when you've had a glass of Sauvignon Blanc in recent times for a claimed wine estate, and you've basically had a mouth of sulfuric acid. That's not pleasant. And it also, I don't think, does the wine of the great justice, especially as Sauvignon Blanc is more than just a cool glass by the beach or by yeah, the pool. Yeah. It's a wine that can do wonders with food Definitely. if the wine is getting the right sort of treatment. Yeah, no, Miss Stephanie, I think that um, you can do so much with Sauvignon Blanc. And I think that our, um, the, the products we have in our portfolio are such a good example of that. We have our estate Sauvignon Blanc, which is kind of your traditional Sauvignon Blanc, like what most people would expect. And then we have the rattlesnake, um, which is a lightly wooded um, something like that spends um, some time in some of it. Some spend some time in um, French oak, but then we also have the concrete eggs, which we use as well. So that's a very different take on something like you know that's that's kind of more towards the Chardonnay feel to it but it still is a, a Sauvignon Blanc and then you have the black swan which is a really elegant and um, beautiful well-rounded uh, Sauvignon Blanc so it's, it's so interesting for us to see how you can treat Sauvignon Blanc and you can um, make it in a way that suits so many different people and so many different palettes. Uh, there is one more uh, and I've enjoyed a lot of red wine from across the Constantia Valley um, uh, a big fan of a, a number of the estates I remember university drinking a lot of the Bay for Buckley on May 4th, yes, so yeah. was a, a local at my pizza hall to my <laughs> university. Uh, but I've also had a fair amount of the Casarino, which, uh, which I've always loved. Uh, but what you've got here is the Merlot, and I, I like the fact you've chosen the Merlot because, I mean, it's a grape on the up in South Africa, and it's a grape we're starting to understand and give a little more credit for. I think Sideways as a movie has got a lot to be playing for, mm. but let's try not to put on no Merlot. And the idea of Merlot as just being a blend wine has been set aside, and we're starting to really recognize and appreciate the merits of the grape in its own terms. No, most certainly. I think that um, Merlot in the past could potentially have been, as you say, treated very badly, but I think that's, you know, what we've, our take on Merlot is it's not just a kind of a, a very simple wine, but it has great complexity to it. And I think that you can have that Merlot with Merlot, and, and I think that we've been able to achieve that so well with, with JD's winemaking. Um, it's our biggest red varietal on our farm. So we have about 60 hectares and the vine, of which most of that is um, white, of which most of that is Sauvignon Blanc. But then we have about 30% of our vines um, servicing the, the red wine market. Um, and the biggest, the bulk of that is for Merlot. And it's a very popular, very well received wine for us. I think there's reason for it, and it's a, it's a really good wine. And the reason I we bought it today was really because it pairs well with food, and that's hopefully going to go very well with um, what you're eating today. Um, and yeah, it's just a easy drinking, really um, delicious wine. All right, well, let's try. You've sold me on wanting to <laughs> to have a sip. Uh, let's do it. Right, in your hands here. 2016, so it's got three years of age on it. 
Yeah, and, and I don't know if this is um, something you noticed before, but on our um, most of our bottles, we have the Constantia logo that's embossed into the bottle. And it's quite a cool um, little added extra that we show to the consumer. Basically, it's saying that if the Constantia logo was 1685, which is when um, the Constantia Valley was first founded, if it has this in the bottle, it means that the grapes are from the Constantia Valley. Um, and it kind of is our stamp of approval as of saying, you know, this is. You know that as a, as a wine drinker that the, the Constantia Valley has really good wine and this these grapes are from the Constantia Valley. Yeah. I love that. There's a real history and heritage. I think you should do more of that, to be honest. Mm. You've, you've got a really valuable proposition. And uh, Constantia, whether it's Jane Austen scribbling about it yeah. or <laughs> Napoleon getting drunk on islands. Yeah. So, yeah, there is so much history to that Constantia Valley. No, most definitely. We, we're so fortunate. And I suppose we take it for granted. And it's, it's quite a unique, amazing position to be in where we have such a history, but at the same time, we run on the doorstep of Cape Town. You know, we're in Cape Town, so you don't have to tra travel very far um, to get to us. You know, if, you, if you're if staying in Cape Town City Centre, it's a 20 minute drive and, and you're at our farm. So it's quite cool that we have the history and, and all that goes with it and the, the quality that goes with the history, but at the same time being super convenient and, and local. Well, you also have the wine. Uh, for me, this has probably got another year or two to really reach your friend. Very friendly green, but still a lovely, soft, smooth Merlot. And, uh, I love the fact that Merlot is under, undergoing something of a resurrection. Uh, and I also love the fact that we've been able to see it today and enjoy some really, really good wine and spread the gospel of the Constantia yeah. Valley and Stenberg in particular. So thank you for that. That's your first time in Pretoria. It's a, an exciting <laughs> place. Uh, you shouldn't uh, have said that. <laughs> it comes from Cape Town. It's about 10 years ago in Cape Town and uh, yeah. today here. Uh, it's been a lovely selection. Sternberg is a place I've spent a lot of time on. I've lost many golf balls there. I've eaten at the bistro many occasions. I've drank a lot of their wine over the years. Uh, and it's always been a combination of beautiful terroir and some really high quality winemaking. A new winemaker coming on board with a lot of her own history, about to start a new generation of wine, which I think is cause for great excitement and a real reason to look forward to. Visit if you can, but if not, and just find some of the Sternberg wine and enjoy what, just a beautiful part of the winemaking world, but also some great expertise. If you're looking to get hold of some wine, your best place to start is online at Pick and Pay. See what they've got going. Look out for this. The so next time you're in the Cape, wander down, ask for Heather at mm -hmm. Stanbridge. We're more than happy to give you a glass or two and enjoy some really good wine from Cape Town. Heather, thank you. Thank cheers. you. Cheers.